The Life and Sad Ending of Richard Dix. Richard Dix, born Ernst Carlton Brimmer, was born July 18, 1893 in St. Paul, Minnesota. He was educated there and at the desire of his father studied to be a surgeon. His obvious acting talent in his school dramatic club led him to leading roles in most of the school plays. At six feet tall and 180 pounds, Dix excelled in sports, especially football and baseball. After a year at the University of Minnesota, he took a position at a bank, spending his evenings training for the stage. His professional start was with a local stock company, and this led to a similar work in New York City. The death of his father left him with a mother and sister to support. He went to Los Angeles and became leading man for the Morosco Stop Company. His success there earned him a contract with Paramount Pictures. He then changed his name to Dix. After moving to Hollywood, he began a career in Western movies. One of the few actors to successfully bridge the transition from silent films to talkies, Dix's remem best remembered early role was in Cecil B. DeMille's silent version of The Ten Commandments in 1923. His rugged good looks and dark features made him a popular player in westerns. His athletic ability led to his starring role in Paramount's Warming Up, 1928, a baseball story and also the studio's first feature with synchronized score and sound effects. His deep voice and commanding presence were perfectly suited for the talkies, and he was signed by RKO Radio Pictures in 1929, scoring an early triumph in the all-talking mystery drama Seven Keys to Bald Pet. In 1929. In 1931, he was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actor for his performance as Yancey Cravat in Cimarron, in which he was billed over Irene Dunn. Cimarron, based on the popular novel by Edna Ferber, took the Best Picture Award. Dix starred in another RKO adventure, The Lost Squadron. A memorable role for Dix was in the 1935 British futuristic film The Tunnel. Dix starred in The Great Jasper with an blind alibi in the late 1930s. His popular RKO Radio Pictures co-star in Blind Alibi was Ace the Wonder Dog. Dix's human co-stars were Whitney Bourne and Eduardo Cianelli. The film was directed by Lou Landers. Dix also starred as the homicidal Captain Stone in the Val Luton production of The Ghost Ship, directed by Mark Robson. In 1941, Dix played Wild Bill Hickok in Badlands of Dakota and portrayed Wyatt Earp the following year in Tombstone, The Town Too Tough to Die, featuring Edgar Buchanan as Curly Bill Brocious. In 1944, he starred in The Whistler, the first in a series of eight Whistler films made by Columbia Picture. He also starred in the next six movies of the offbeat, crime-related series, playing a different character each time. Dix retired from acting after the seventh of these films, The Thirteenth Hour. He retired from films in 1947. Richard Dix married his first wife, Winifred Coe, on October 20th, 1931. They had a daughter, Martha Mary Ellen. They divorced in 1933. He married his second wife, Virginia Webster, on June 29th, 1934. They had twin boys, Richard Jr. and Robert Dix and an adopted daughter, Sarah Sue. After years of fighting alcoholism, Dix suffered a serious heart attack on September 12, 1949, while on a train from New York to Los Angeles. Dix died at the age of 56 on September 20, 1949. Richard Dix Sr. was interred in Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Glendale, California. Dix has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in the Motion Pictures section at 1610 Vine Street. It was dedicated February 8, 1960.